have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything yes my friend i've experienced such a dream in fact i've had lots of dreams about all sorts of things once I had that dream, you know the one where you're in school but you don't have any clothes so you're like completely naked and it's super embarrassing? That's one that I'd rather not relive. At least the dream was in my head so only I get to see it and witness it and, and no one could like record it and then play it back on a TV screen for lots of other people to see. Yeah, in neuroscience we're almost able to do that. For a while now, neuroscientists have been trying to look through people's eyes and record their dreams. So in this video, we're gonna learn all about it. Hello Neuronauts, Cognic here, and in this video we're going to talk all about how neuroscientists want to look through people's eyes and record their dreams. First, we're going to talk a little bit about what vision is and how neuroscientists can actually see through your eyes by decoding your brain activity. Then, we'll be talking about what dreams are and how neuroscientists have attempted to record people's dreams. We'll also be looking at a lot of real recordings of people's vision and dreams that were reconstructed from people's brain activity. Let's start by talking about what vision is. Vision, or your sense of sight, is the ability to detect the environment around you using light in the visible spectrum. When you look at an apple, light bounces off of it and is reflected into your eyes. The clarity or focus of the image that you see is called your visual acuity. So when people say 2020 vision or something like that, they're describing visual acuity. The light data from the apple is then translated into signals in the back of your eye, and those signals travel down your optic nerves and into your brain. The right side of your eyes want to send signals that end up on the right side of your brain. The left side of each of your eyes wants to send signals that end up on the left side of your brain. That means that the right side of your left eye and the left side of your right eye have to switch their signals over to the other side, and this switch happens in a part of the brain called the optic chiasm. Once the signals are on the correct side of the brain, they travel down the optic tract, and then they're spread out through the optic radiations. The signals end up in the primary visual cortex, which is right in the back of your brain in a section called the occipital lobe. This is where visual perception typically starts. The two streams hypothesis describes how vision is processed after it gets to the occipital lobe. The two streams hypothesis might sound intimidating, but it's not too complicated. The primary visual cortex processes the raw image parts, like angles, lines, colors, and textures. The data then gets sent either up through the dorsal stream or down through the ventral stream. The dorsal stream, also called the where stream, is the processing that tells you where what you're looking at is in space relative to you. The ventral stream, or the what stream, helps you identify what you're actually looking at. It tells you what it is. In other words, if you're looking at that apple again, the ventral stream tells you that is an apple, and the dorsal stream tells you the apple is directly in front of me by about a foot. Remember, visual acuity describes how clear an image coming into your eyeballs is, like 20-20 vision or something like that. That's visual acuity. But visual perception is actually experiencing images in your brain. You can have great visual acuity, so 20-20 vision, but still have problems in visual perception. This would be like if your eyesight was perfect, but you have problems in your brain that cause you to not experience vision correctly. So how could neuroscientists find a way to look through another person's eyes? Research in this area, like many other areas, started in animals. In 1999, Dr. Yang Dan at the University of California, Berkeley, showed cats movies and recorded their brain activity. Using the brain activity, she reconstructed what they were seeing in surprising detail. Remember, this was 22 years ago, and the fact that she accomplished this with the technology of the 1990s is extremely impressive. On the left, we see the movie that was shown to a cat, and on the right, we see the reconstructed video made from the cat's brain activity. You can clearly see that the video on the right is just a noisy version of the video on the left, meaning that Dr. Yang Dan successfully used this cat as a camera. A couple weeks ago, I actually made a video all about cat brains that included this research, so I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested and want to check it out. 
So could we do the same thing that Dr. Yang Dan did with the cats in people? The human brain is larger and more complex, but if you take baby steps, you can actually apply the exact same principles. Human brain activity can be measured, so what if you created images of really simple shapes, and then showed those images of shapes to people, so that you could decode their brain activity and try to reconstruct the images? That's exactly what Yoichi Miyawaki and Yukiyasu Kamatani did in 2008. These researchers showed people simple images and used what are called multi-voxel pattern decoders to try and reconstruct the images from brain activity. Here you can see the results of this experiment. On the left is the image being shown to a participant, and on the right is the image being reconstructed from their brain activity. The right side is noisy, but you can still make out the shapes being shown. In other words, these scientists successfully looked through the eyes of these participants to reconstruct the simple images that they were seeing. In 2011, researchers Shinji Nishimoto and Jack Gallant attempted to take this concept a step further. Three subjects were placed in an MRI scanner and watched hours of movie clips from YouTube. They built a dictionary of movies and the brain activity seen when watching those movies. Then they looked at new movies and compared the new brain activity to the activity in their movie dictionary. Once they had the top matching videos from the dictionary, they averaged them to make a final reconstructed movie. The red box in the top left is the new video that was shown to the person in the MRI scanner. The blue boxes on the right show the closest matching movies in the brain activity video dictionary and the green boxes on the left are the reconstructed movies. Focus on the red box in the top left and the green boxes. You can see that they did a pretty good job of reconstructing what people were watching in the videos. Finally, in 2019, researchers Guohua Shen and Yukiyasu Kamitani took image reconstruction from brain activity a step further. They used deep learning to reconstruct images that people were looking at using their brain activity. Using a type of neural network called a deep neural network, they managed to make some very trippy image reconstructions. Let's take a look at their results. The real image is on the left and the reconstruction is on the right. People looked at the images on the left and then an fMRI recorded their brain activity so it could be input for the deep neural network. You can see some similarities in the images and you can also see how neural networks have the ability to turn owls into nightmare candy. These results are super cool, and if you want to see more reconstructions like this, I'll link the Kamatani Lab YouTube channel down in the description. They have a lot of cool videos reconstructing images, letters, and shapes from people's brain activity. So now we talked about vision, but what does that have to do with dreams? Let's briefly talk about what dreams are, and if you've had a really weird dream or nightmare, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I read all the comments, and I think dreams are super cool. When we sleep, there are four stages of sleep. These stages are called N1, N2, N3, and REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, and it's called that because during REM sleep, our eyes actually do rapidly move under our eyelids. The N3 stage of sleep is also called delta sleep, deep sleep, or slow wave sleep. Most of your dreaming happens in short bursts during REM sleep, but you can actually dream during any stage of sleep. Dreaming during light stages of sleep can cause delirium or a state of confusion between sleep and waking states. Dreams can include thoughts, images, and emotions, and they can have lasting impacts on us. Dreams can have structure and narrative like a story, or they can be completely nonsensical and random. So why do we dream? One day I'll do a video specifically on dreaming that will go into a lot more detail, but for now I'm just going to mention four reasons that scientists think that we dream. First, dreaming can help us process emotions. If your day was full of emotional events, your dreams might help you to catalog, process, and think about those emotions. This can aid in improving psychological health. Second, dreams might help us to process and store memories. Have you ever studied for a test right before going to bed? You feel unprepared, but then you wake up in the morning feeling more prepared than you did when you went to bed? This is a simple example of this concept. Dreams might help us to catalog, sort, and store information and memories from our day so that we can remember the things that are important and then forget or delete the things that are not necessary. Third, dreams might allow us to express our deepest desires. Maybe you want to try flying, have a billion dollars, or hang out with your favorite movie star. Dreams might give us the ability to experience things that we can't in waking life. This theory was very popular with psychologist Sigmund Freud, who thought that dreams were a way of expressing and fulfilling our unconscious desires. 
Finally, the fourth theory on why we dream and my favorite theory for why we dream is that dreams may be practice for life. See, in your dreams, you can get attacked by a bear, experience a zombie apocalypse, or be in a house fire, but you won't die. Sure, those dreams aren't pleasant, but they allow you to see how you might act if you were really in that situation. Having dreams where you experience being in a house fire might actually make you act quicker if you're in a real house fire. In other words, dreams are kind of like a virtual reality space where we can practice things before experiencing them in real life. Super cool. So now that we know what a dream is, how can we record someone's dream like a movie? Remember all that vision reconstruction research I was talking about at the beginning of this video? That's the first step. If we can properly decode brain activity, then we can put it on screens for other people to watch too. A big part of our dreams are visual. We see things in our dreams. And so potentially you could use some of these vision reconstruction techniques to actually reconstruct what someone sees in a dream. In 2013, Tomoyasu Horikawa and others, including Dr. Kamitani from before, attempted to start decoding dreams. First, participants were set up with EEG, or electroencephalography, to record activity in the surface of their brains. Next, they were placed in an fMRI scanner to also record their brain activity. They were asked to fall asleep in the scanner, and when a dream was detected, they would wake the participants up and ask them to recall what they saw in the dream. They trained a statistical model to decode the themes that the dreams contained, and then they added pre-trained images to try and visualize the dreams. In other words, the scientists were able to guess and visualize what a person dreamed about before the person told them about it. Watch this. In the top left, you can see the time before a person wakes up, and the model is using the words at the bottom to guess what the person is dreaming about based on their brain activity. The images on the screen represent what the computer thinks the dream is about. In this dream, we see lots of text and letters in different languages, and when the person wakes up, they explain the following. What I was looking at was some kind of characters. There was something like a writing paper of composing an essay, and I was looking at the characters from the essay or whatever it was. Before the next participant wakes up, we see streets and buildings, and then a burst of different people, adults and children, start popping up. The words female and male are highlighted at the bottom. When the person wakes up, they say, well, there were persons, about three persons, inside some sort of hall. There was a male, a female, and maybe like a child? Ah, it was like a boy, a girl, and a mother. I don't think there was any color. These scientists were able to predict what people were dreaming about before the people woke up. Now imagine if you could combine the vision reconstruction research with this model. We would then have the potential to record people's dreams like a movie and watch them back on a computer. Imagine a future where you could have a dream and then share that dream on Facebook the next day. Weird. That sounds like it could be an episode of Black Mirror. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video was made as a response to a comment that I got on my video about cat brains. The idea for this video was given to me by Santana Spice Wagon, so thanks man, that's really cool. If you have questions about neuroscience and psychology, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I might make a video on it. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It makes my day to see new subscribers and likes on my videos because it makes me feel like you guys are learning something cool and you're enjoying it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.